Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Chess with Constantine, the first and only YouTube channel that not only presents to you, but in fact encourages the wholesale slaughter of cute defenseless kittens. Especially when those kittens happen to be among the strongest chess players and chess programs in the world. Uh, you may recall that in my last encounter with Chess.com's famous, or perhaps infamous, bot uh, Mittens, I, as the white pieces, played pawn to f4 and uh, proceeded to completely crush the poor cat uh, in the resulting positions. Now, uh, of course, today is a new day, and I think the cute little kitten deserves a fair shot at revenge. So, uh, for your viewing pleasure, uh, right now, live, I'm going to choose the challenge mode as black, and we will see what Mittens actually plays. Now, Mittens, it looks like, uh, played uh, pawn to e4. Uh, this opening is uh, likely considered to be one of the most famous in chess, uh, with writings related to e4 uh, dating back as far as the Royal Lopez manuscript of uh, 1543. That's a long time. Uh, openings arising from uh, the King's Pawn opening uh, could be the same ones uh, played uh, by the famous kings like King Philip II of Spain, for example. Uh, you know, from history, the guy who um, unsuccessfully tried to invade England uh, by building the Grand Armada. So, you know, it's really mind-blowing uh, to sit at the board and uh, realize that the game you're playing could have been played by some of those uh, historical figures. Uh, but of course, uh, e4, e5 is only one possibility here. Uh, black can play a variety of uh, different openings in response to e4. For example, uh, knight f6, uh, knight c6, uh, g6, uh, e6, d6, d5, uh, c6 or c5, and even a6 are all playable and perfectly, perfectly good openings. Uh, maybe not a6, but the rest of them are quite good. And uh, if you play uh, pawn to e4, the king's pawn opening in your own games, uh, you really should uh, be aware of at least some of these possibilities. But uh, for our purposes, I'm going to choose the Sicilian defense, uh, that is pawn to c5, and Bin's response with the standard reply, knight to f3. Uh, the point of this opening, of course, uh, computers are perfect, you know, Mittens has uh, functionally unlimited memory, and no single opening I play is going to take him, or I mean, take her by surprise. Uh, but uh, the advantage of the Sicilian is that it creates unbalanced pawn structure. So you can see right away the C pawn here is attacking the D4 square like this. And, uh, you know, after I play, for example, D6 and the D4 takes, uh, knight takes, uh, is, is the usual uh, uh, response. Now knight, uh, after knight F6 attacking the E4 pawn and knight C3, you already have a quite unbalanced uh, structure. So white uh, pretty much has control of the center with some uh, contest uh, from black here. But, you know, if black survives, black can actually uh, grow to control the center later on, or at least attack it. Uh, on the, at the same time, black has uh, this uh, semi-open uh, C file. And this file is very attractive after I play moves like knight c6 and bishop d7. You know, you could, play the, you could put your rook on, on this file uh, and uh, it will be a quite active piece uh, early in the game. Uh, now let's look at some possibilities here, what can, what can play. So uh, some popular possibilities here are uh, pawn to e6, uh, pawn to a6, and pawn to g6, which is the, called the Sicilian dragon. And it's called the dragon because of this shape uh, that the pawns make that resembles kind of like a snake curled up or uh, one of those European dragons curled up. Uh, the point of this opening is that after g6 and bishop g7 castle kingside, uh, the bishop will be on this long diagonal and it will be quite um, strong. And then, uh, you know, as I mentioned, white uh, black can play uh, knight to c6 or d7 
put the rook on this uh, semi-open file or perhaps uh, just uh, you know put the rook on uh, b8 even and then do this kind of pawn storm on the queen side uh, at the same time white uh, can organize an attack on the king side uh, one of the sharpest uh, lines is uh, pawn to f3 first uh, preventing the knight from coming here and then uh, bishop will come to e3, queen d2, making this kind of like a double, doubling up with the idea that bishop will come to h6 in exchange, uh, this aggressive uh, bishop on g7. And then white will castle actually queen side, putting the rook on this uh, active central file. And then white will uh, proceed with the pawn store, uh, try to open the h file, and uh, checkmate uh, black king on the h file. Uh, black at the same time will have some attacking possibilities uh, by uh, using uh, uh, very often the rook and the rook sacrifice uh, for the knight here on c3 or you know rook b8 and, and with the spawn storm uh, and uh, basically it's a race of who can checkmate whom first so it's quite fun uh, it's very exciting and even if you lose you know you lose a very beautiful game so, uh, you know, if I have to lose this game, then this is the way I'd like to go. Of course, uh, you know, white doesn't need to go into these uh, sharp variations, which, by the way, I know quite well. Uh, white can play uh, bishop d2 or bishop d3 and simply castle kingside rather than queenside. And uh, what this does is it avoids all these sharp lines that I just talked about, where there is no more race for checkmate. It's just a calm positional game. But, okay, at the same time, if white chooses this approach, uh, then uh, black will not have too many problems in the opening. So this is just fine by me. And uh, we will see what uh, white will play here. Uh, respond to g6. And the Mittens uh, decides not to go for this uh, Yugoslav attack variation, respond to f3, and instead uh, goes for uh, the more calm bishop e2 variation. So this changes nothing in our plan. We simply play bishop g7 and the idea will be to castle. So after castle we just castle ourselves. Uh, both kings now have castled and uh, white continues development so black does the same with uh, knight to c6. And now you know nothing changes just bishop to d7. Uh, uh, I find a lot of beginners uh, making uh, mistakes, uh, like they have an opening like this and they feel like they have to force the position and uh, do some hyper aggressive moves, maybe, you know, like h5 or I don't know, some, some peace sacrifice. And, you know, it's not necessary. Uh, as a black, as a person who is playing black, you let the position come to you, okay? You, uh, you don't have anything to prove to anybody. You are just making calm, uh, developing moves. And you're waiting to see what white does, uh, because uh, if white, it is white who has to prove something, some kind of advantage uh, out of the opening. And if white fails to prove, then you can calmly organize an attack either in the center or, uh, you know, on the queen side with this pawns. Uh, now we will see, we see that uh, Mittens uh, played knight to f3. And, uh, okay, this is a good move. Certainly, it's a much better move than uh, knight takes knight here. Uh, you know, uh, knight takes knight is terrible for white because simply bishop takes c6. And we have uh, two pieces attacking the e4 pawn and a quite active already con con contest in the center with the other bishop on the long diagonal. Uh, but there's no way to compel a computer as strong as mittens to make such a monumental uh, strategic blunder as taking the knight so okay knight to f3 and uh, okay not, nothing really changed uh, we have a plan to push uh, these pawns on the queen side now that we completed the development of pieces uh, you know this is just normal bishop is kind of looking this way so uh, we have to organize some action here uh, you know, there's not really a point to put a rook on uh, c8 because, uh, you know, white castled uh, kingside rather than queenside. So there are no sacrifices, you know, rook takes c3, for example, that are any good. Uh, so maybe a move like rook to b8, uh, preparing this pawn push, might be quite a, quite a good move. So let's try that. 
and the idea of course that I'm preparing the push b5. Uh, now uh, the idea behind uh, pawn to a3 which is what uh, Mittens played now. Obviously pawn to a3 stops moves like uh, knight to b4, uh, I mean you can see that, but also like more abstractly, more indirectly, if my pawns ever get to uh, this point, uh, then the b4 square will be contested and uh, you know white can play captures and have some kind of activity here on the queen side uh, that contests black's activity uh, so this is a pretty good move uh, now black can i think actually just play uh, b5 right away so it looks like a pawn sacrifice but bear with me here okay so yes, uh, you can see that uh, bishop and the knight, uh, white, two of white's pieces, are indeed uh, looking at the b5 square. But, uh, you know, black rook uh, is looking at the b5 square also, and uh, also we have uh, e4 uh, pawn that has been attacked by the black knight. So after pawn to b5, actually it's not so easy to capture here. I mean, it's not so easy to capture here. Uh, because, for example, if knight takes b5, then you have uh, knight takes e4 right away. And, uh, you know, it's quite strong. Uh, you just recapture the pawn. And uh, if, uh, you know, b5 and bishop takes uh, b5, then it's actually even worse. Because then uh, still knight to takes uh, e4. And if now knight takes knight, then the bishop is hanging and you can uh, later, uh, at some point, you can recapture this. Uh, also, you know, also you have to remember that uh, we have an attack here, uh, which could be relevant later on. So actually, a b5, and I don't think that capture is possible. Okay, queen d3, but you know, I don't care about this. I'm going to play a5 with this idea, and I don't think capture is still possible. I, I think it's um, actually quite good. And the rook c1, okay, I don't know what it does, but it does not stop our idea of uh, before, so I'm going to go for before. And uh, now uh, Mittens is uh, offering a peace trade, as you can see. Uh, so obviously, well, maybe it's, to some of you it's not obvious, uh, but uh, trading the pieces here would be a huge uh, strategic wonder uh, on the part of black, uh, because... Uh, I mean, obviously queen can take, but if pawn takes, it looks like, you know, with the attack on the knight, and uh, the entire position uh, for black is paralyzed, probably for the rest of the game. I mean, maybe I'm missing something here, but it, it looks to me, it feels to me that uh, this capture is just terrible. Uh, I mean, you're going to just give up the center for the rest of the game. And uh, we are not going to do that, you know, as a rule of thumb, if a strong player or a player, player that's stronger than you is offering uh, a peace trade, you know, don't do it. So we'll just uh, move uh, knight to e8 and uh, we are going to avoid uh, any kind of trades. And now we'll just kick this knight away with uh, pawn to e6. Notice we have this uh, hedgehog established with the two central pawns, so this is quite strong. And the point is we are uh, indirectly contesting, we are beginning to contest uh, the center. Uh, now that uh, there are no uh, peace trades uh, being threatened, I think it's quite safe uh, to move the knight back to f6, which is what we are going to do, and we are attacking this pawn. So the pawn is being defended with uh, bishop to d3. And uh, now, uh, you know, uh, you don't have to force the position, uh, so you can just uh, play uh, calm uh, developing moves or waiting moves, uh, maybe a move like h6, uh, you know, controlling the square to prevent any kind of uh, shenanigans with knight g5, uh, any kind of sacrifices here. Uh, that might be a good move, uh, queen to uh, c7 might be another move to, to look at. Uh, so let's, I mean, let's play just h6 and see what white does. And, uh, you know, just, like I said, don't force the position. Let the position come to you. Uh, you know, just queen c7. Uh, let's see what, uh, you know, white has to prove this, uh, this to us. Uh, okay. So, uh, 
as a strategy, usually in the Sicilians, uh, you know, a break like pawn to d5 uh, can be quite good. Like if you find that uh, you are able to play d5 safely, uh, then uh, you know you are at least equal usually as black. So uh, our attack on the queen side uh, is being blockaded right now. We cannot continue to push this pawn. So you know I can start looking for possible breaks uh, d5. Okay, d5 right away uh, maybe is not so so good. Um, uh, maybe we can activate like the rook, uh, play like rook fd8 or something. And the idea is that uh, you know the rook is going to be supporting uh, this pawn, and rook behind the pawn is usually pretty good, uh, and it will indirectly control this file. So we will play rook fd8, uh, preparing eventual push uh, to d5. And uh, continuing with this idea, uh, we can play now bishop to e8. Uh, bishop to e8 uh, is a good move because, uh, you know, the bishop doesn't lose much by moving back. Uh, it's going to allow us to directly support our pawn. And also the bishop is kind of going to be looking here and defending the f7 and uh, g6 squares. So there's not going to be any kind of threats for sacrifice of g6, for example. Uh, because, uh, you know, the bishop is going to be protecting this. So we're going to play bishop to e8. I think it's a quite good move. And I have no, absolutely no idea what the heck is happening with this move, uh, queen to uh, a2. Uh, it must be some kind of uh, super deep uh, computer move that us mortals just uh, cannot understand. You know, but uh, it's not going to stop me from uh, enacting my plan. Uh, we decided already that we are going to try to look for the break uh, d5 and uh, start some kind of contest in the center. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. Guys, if you make a plan, uh, just uh, follow through with your plan and don't let your opponent uh, bamboozle you, okay? So we are going to go ahead and do it uh, d5. Okay. So, you know, this is kind of, kind of a very interesting queen maneuver, if you think about it. He went from uh, queen b3 to uh, a2 to uh, b1. Uh, it's a quite, quite interesting queen maneuver. Uh, I think it's the first time I've ever seen this. Uh, uh, and honestly, I think only a computer could come up with something like this. I mean, this is just insane. Um, Probably he's looking at, or she, I'm sorry, probably she is looking at uh, this uh, indirect pressure on uh, g6 pawn. So the idea is that uh, after I play d5, after we trade off these pawns, uh, this is uh, potentially going to be a threat. Uh, you know, like you could play something like knight to h4 and, you know, sacrifice a piece here and uh, try to uh, destabilize or checkmate uh, black king. But, okay, it's not so easy because I did play uh, bishop to <coughs> e8, which controls both of these uh, squares. So, you know, I'm not so uh, worried about uh, any kind of immediate uh, attacks on my king uh, because of that. Uh, king, is, uh, king is, in fact, quite safe. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and take on e4. All right, now... Uh, you have to be careful. I have a feeling that, uh, I mean, I don't know how strong my audience is, but I have a feeling a lot of you would uh, take the knight here, and this would be a terrible mistake, uh, because uh, it's just the bishop takes back, and the white has two very strong bishops in the center, and basically uncontested center. So, <clears throat> uh, capturing this knight would be terrible. So what to do? Well, um, you can play knight to d5, uh, attacking this bishop and, and contesting the center. And now uh, let's uh, just take a few minutes and, and, and uh, well, not, not a few minutes, but let's take a few seconds and at least look at this position. So <clears throat> what I'm seeing here right away is uh, this bishop is very strong, okay? So the most active piece uh, black has right now is this bishop. 
uh, it's uh, it's quite strong in this diagonal. It's attacking this B2 pawn. Uh, another aspect of the position, of course, is the rook uh, on b8, which is uh, trying to attack this uh, uh, this pawn as well indirectly and is supporting our advance. So some themes uh, in the position include this uh, move forward and also uh, this uh, diagonal. Uh, so what do we do with all this? Uh, well, uh, okay, and uh, there's another aspect of the position here. Uh, so we started action in the center and we see that really the center is only being held by uh, this knight uh, you know this knight is contesting these two squares but uh, you know if we uh, if we trade off this knight somehow uh, then uh, you know it is black that's going to be occupying and, and doing some kind of action in the center so i'm looking at the move like knight to uh, e5 uh, attacking the pair uh, of one of the bishops in the pair. So obviously he cannot allow uh, my knight to stay here. He has to capture and after knight captures knight and queen captures, uh, we are going to have a double attack on this B pawn, which is fantastic because it goes along with our attack theme and uh, suddenly all our pieces are working uh, towards something. So uh, this is a quite a good move, uh, knight to E5. And now after takes, queen takes, of course. And this is a threat now. So I have no idea what uh, rook to a6 does. Uh, it doesn't prevent any threats. I don't think there are any sacrifices here uh, that can be made. Uh, okay, he can make it, but uh, you know he's not going to be able to checkmate me by sucking the rook on uh, e6. So maybe this like. Maybe like later on, this like supports uh, ideas with the knight uh, coming to one of these. But uh, this is a quite deep move, but it doesn't stop the immediate threat. So I'm going to go ahead and take this pawn. I don't really care. Like I'm, I'm, I'm following through with the attack, guys. Like, uh, come here, mittens. I'm coming for you. You know. And uh, okay, so mittens captured on h6, but again, I don't think my king is in too much danger here. Uh, because uh, because of this bishop it's uh, protecting things quite nicely and now we just push i think uh, you know try to activate uh, our attack on the uh, queen side okay so let's take a minute here um, we have uh, rook uh, contesting our rook uh, on the b uh, the b file and uh, we have a threat, uh, of course, uh, the rook is threatening uh, the bishop here on uh, b2 and is also uh, threatening the pawn on b3. So, for example, if bishop moves away, um, you know, you can uh, play rook captures uh, pawn on b3 or pawn, you know, or pawn takes. But, but guys, and there's a big but. You have to be able to, to look one step further. And if you want to improve in chess, improve in your calculations, it's very important to see not only the immediate threats, which is what I just described, but what happens actually afterwards. And I don't think it's so easy. Uh, so let's, let's look. So let's say that actually I do play bishop e5 and he plays a move like rook takes a pawn here. Uh, it looks like I'm down a pawn, but what happens if uh, rook takes rook uh, obviously he has to capture with the pawn and now uh, we have knight to b4 look at that so knight to b4 in this position would fork uh, the rook and the bishop which is also being attacked by the rook on the d8 and actually this looks uh, not only does it not lose but it looks like it's losing for white uh, because now <coughs> Uh, whatever you know even if he moves the rook uh, now the bishop is, is gone so actually it's not so easy and uh, you know here also if uh, I play bishop e5 you know obviously controlling this diagonal and uh, he plays pawn takes <coughs> once again you have knight to b4 forking this 
So, you know, it's not so easy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play uh, bishop to e5. And, okay, so now he's attacking my rook. So this is, this is, uh, this is unpleasant, okay? Uh, uh, rook is being uh, under attack. And after move like uh, rook to c8, uh, he has this move, which is now supported by the rook. So this, I guess this was the point of uh, rook to e6. So let's look at this. I mean, rook c8, we have uh, knight to d6, forking the bishop and the rook. Uh, but, you know, it's not so easy. Because I advance the pawn here, uh, what happens if uh, after this uh, situation, and uh, let's say, uh, you know, this happens, rook moves over, he forks, uh, what, uh, what actually happens if uh, pawn takes uh, c2? I think he has to deal with this pawn because it's promo it's uh, it's threatening uh, you know taking the rook with uh, promotion and it's quite dangerous to just leave it there so uh, you know let's say takes and the bishop uh, captures the pawn then you have uh, rook takes rook with check and actually it's quite dangerous uh, because uh, you know it's almost checkmate with this uh, square being controlled so bishop takes rook but now you have uh, rook from c8 to b8 attacking the bishop and you have to move this bishop now because uh, again it will be checkmate if you don't. Uh, so he cannot capture my bishop for example because uh, you know he's going to get checkmate. Uh, so I think this works. I think uh, after rook to c8 here uh, this is uh, this is not so easy you know. This is not so easy. And now, this is very important. Check. And now we attacking uh, the bishop with the, with the rook. So he moves. Uh, okay, now uh, we have uh, pretty good shape. We have uh, two bishops versus uh, versus two bishops, uh, we have a quite active position with uh, some potential mate threats uh, down the line. And we have a quite active knight as well. So I think uh, knight before attacking the rook is a quite good move. And uh, this, this I did not see coming. So, uh, <clears throat> so it looks like uh, the cat is offering us uh, the exchange. Uh, meaning uh, I'm attacking the rook, so I can take the rook and he will take the bishop. So uh, this will lead to a very complex endgame. Looks like that I should be able to uh, win or at least draw. Um, and uh, white uh, can hold on. I mean, two bishops are very strong, but they're not quite as strong as a bishop and a rook. So I think I should just take this uh, and uh, hope that I can uh, do well in this endgame. Uh, now just uh, I think king g7 with the threat uh, to fork the bishop and the knight uh, should be uh, quite quite good. <coughs> okay and uh, we will play pawn to f6 uh, and even I think g5 uh, to prevent the bishop from coming here. Okay and now let's just mobilize our pieces maybe just bishop g6 and the knight to b4 attack you know mo mobilizing the knight uh okay he's attacking the pawn uh, you have to be careful you can't push this because the pawn will be lost here but we can just offer the bishop trade uh, that would be quite nice Okay, so book says uh, if you if your opponent has a bishop pair, you should try to trade off one of them, and that way uh, the effectiveness of the two bishops working together has been more you know more than the sum of their parts is is destroyed. Uh, but okay, he's he did not do this, uh, so uh, you know I need a second. Uh, I think uh, move like uh, knight to uh, 
knight to c2 is quite strong, uh, you know, harassing this bishop. So let's try that. Uh, okay, bishop. Uh, okay, he, so he's attack. Uh, she's attacking uh, my rook, uh, but we will move with the rook uh, probably to b3 because the idea is you're know, cutting off the king here, um, you know, and also having indirect pressure and some kind of attack uh, on the king side. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is not a huge problem, uh, you know, you're attacking uh, my bishop, I don't want to give it up for the knight, that would be quite bad, because uh, the bishop pair will remain on the board, so just bishop back I think is, is uh, perfectly, uh, perfectly understandable. Okay, and now I quite like uh, the move uh, knight to e1. Uh, because it uh, attacks the uh, squares around the king and uh, you know let's let's try some try some attacks so okay you can play uh, uh, rook to b2 attacking uh, these pawns indirectly and maybe just uh, pawn to e5 have some kind of uh, hedgehog structure here and then maybe later on uh, bishop can come out uh, okay bishop uh, to d5 maybe just king g6 uh, okay at some point i want to push the pawn um, not probably not yet though uh, also, I'm looking at moves like this, so, you know, attacking uh, attacking the pieces here. Um, uh, looking at knight knight to c2. Uh, it's uh, quite quite a good move. Uh, so uh, maybe just uh, maybe just knight to c2. Okay, so my rook is being uh, attacked. So what to do? Okay, I can capture the knight. Uh, we established that that's pretty bad because the bishop pair will uh, remain uh, on the board. So I suppose uh, rook can come down. Um, I'll just play rook b7 attacking the bishop and see what uh, Mittens does. And the Mittens uh, plays uh, bishop to e3 and now i think is the good time to push this pawn because you know it's uh, quite active okay uh, this is ridiculous i'm just going to take this knight uh, i mean uh, what, what what kind of move is this this is just uh, complete complete trash so uh, you know, just now I finally get to take one of the bishops, so I'll just take on, take on these three. Um, so this should be winning. I mean, guys, I'm I'm up a full rook. Like if I don't win this position, I'm going to disown myself. <laughs> uh, this is uh, uh, there is a there is a saying in chess that uh, nothing is more difficult than winning a one position. Uh, but you know, I don't care if my opponent is rated three thousand. I'm up a full rook here. I mean, you have to be, uh, you have to be pretty bad uh, to, to be able to lose this. Uh, so, you know, give me a second, I will have to uh, figure out uh, kind of the plan, uh, what I'm going to do here. And then I will uh, proceed. So just, just give me, give me about uh, 30 seconds here. Okay, so just uh, let's just advance the king and uh, capture.
true. Well, let's chase the bishop a little bit and also cut off any kind of uh, king moves. Okay. So obviously I have to bring the king in. So probably, uh, probably queen a king of four, and just uh, you know, if I was playing a human, they would probably resign after king of four. Uh, but I'm not playing a human, you know. I'm playing uh, a machine. Okay, but how can you lose this position? I mean, I'm up a full rook, uh, and uh, come on. Uh, so. <laughs> I was hoping not to lose in the opening, and now this is turning into a lesson of how to checkmate a king with the king and the rook. Okay, <laughs> so this, this is this is what it this is what it's come to. Uh, this is uh, completely ridiculous, but uh, okay, this is guys, this is the strongest bot in the world, and uh, we are just crushing it. Uh, so I'm going to demonstrate the technique of checkmating uh, with the king and the rook. Uh, this is called boxing, one, two. Um, so you uh, play the king first and then the rook and uh, try to just restrict. And these moves are far from optimal, but they don't have to be. The point is uh, that I am going to be demonstrating the idea. And the idea is uh, simply you take away more and more squares. Uh, of course, you don't want to take too many squares because it will be stalemate. But you can see the king and the rook are kind of alternating in a one-two punch sort of way. <clears throat> okay, and now a rook here. You notice the king has two squares left, so if king here. And, uh, you know, uh, I could uh, do something else, but uh, this is quite simple to just move the pawn. And uh, we have a checkmate. So this is pretty unbelievable. I mean, uh, I have uh, defeated Mittens once again, uh, this time with the black pieces in this uh, completely ridiculous endgame. Um, and uh, if you, my viewers, uh, want to learn uh, what I just did and do what I just did to your own opponents, who might I, might I add are probably not rated 3000, then uh, subscribe to my channel and I will teach you. Thank you very much. Uh, until next time and uh, see you later.